Hey, before I go too far, this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Please hit that little thumbs up button down there. It's a like button and it helps me out. It tells YouTube I'm doing an all right job and I'd appreciate you doing it. I'll show you our new, um, you know, one day we're going to have a camera that works well. I swear. I swear this. But, um, looking at our new progression set, uh, it appears to be Chinese cloisonne. Um, came with a fancy little brocade box. Uh, so, this is a progression set, and we actually get to look at all the steps of making cloisonne in a very general way. Um, so, that's actually, this is actually how these three objects in the rear would have been made. I mean, these are cloisonne, they are wired enamel, and uh, it's exactly how this functions for most other things considered cloisonne. Uh, you can get into certain other things that are wireless cloisonne and stuff like that. You can learn more about those things in my other videos, but but for now, we'll talk about this little bronze ball. You see it's got a hole in it, and uh, that's so the gases can escape because they will expand while this is firing, and uh, yeah, that's just not good to have things expand inside of an enclosed metal ball. So anytime ceramics or uh, metal has to be uh, fired into a circle or anything like that, it has to have a hole in it. So the second step we go into is the actual wiring. Now you can see they've begun to lay down the the metal framework of this particular piece. I wonder, we'll try and look at it up here. Which is definitely not going to work. Perfect, okay. So now we can see the, uh, the wire framework. And what they're doing is, what they used to do is solder this on there. Now what they do is use sort of a glue, and I think they fire the glue. I'm not exactly sure. You can learn more about the actual process of gluing cloisons to a metal ball from someone else, I'm sure. But you see how they rise up. So that's actually going to be a cell, a cloison, that contains the uh, enamel from running away. And you can see how they've laid it out. And then the next step is to begin filling cloisons with enamel. Now I think there's certain things they need to do, or at least they did need to do, in the past. Um, you'll notice that they've got all the different colors laid out separately. Now I think that um, were you to add, you see there's a little bit of shading in there. And maybe it didn't matter to them, but some pieces have magnificent shading, like real art. So, now I'm not saying this isn't art, I'm just saying, like, uh, you'll, you'll see the difference in some pieces. But um, it looks like that was allowed to just kind of come together and cloud together, uh, those two shades right there. Now, you'll see some pieces, I believe they would add a small drop of enamel and then fire that drop of enamel and then come back and add color to it so they can control the gradient of the uh, mixing shades. So that's why sometimes this process took an extraordinarily long time. And I'm sure in the modern era they've got quite a few different enamels and different techniques to, to ease that process a bit, but it's still not an uh, easy thing to do. <coughs> So once they've got all the colors added, they'll then fire it. And you can see how rough this is. Um, you can see the wires are sticking up past some of the enamel, some of the enamel sticking up past the wires. So this is the initial firing where everything's still kind of, uh, or at least where all of the colors have been fired. So I do think they probably do the background color at the very least in a separate firing. But you can see um, all the other ones there. So yeah, this is pre-sanding and pre-polishing. And you can see the texture it has. 
So this is an unfinished piece of cloisonne. And then we go to the next one. And this is a sanded piece of cloisonne. So they've just sanded it now. now let's look at those two together. Because you would think this was closer to the end, but actually this one is closer to the end of the pr finished product. So, so shiny rough boy here is just after firing. And then this one is after firing and sanding. Let's see if we can't find the same uh, designs and stuff here. Maybe? Green, okay, green. Uh, they might have they might have fudged it a little bit, I'm not sure. These might not even be the exact same, you know. They're actually, uh, you know, they're folding these little cloisons by hand and stuff. I've, you can see videos of them doing it in China right now. So sanded then goes to the fully finished final product of cloisonne in this case being what I believe is a Kuo cloisonne marble and yeah and that's how they do cloisonne and isn't that kind of neat you tell me where else you can watch one of these videos of a cloisonne progression set and I'll eat my hat I'm just kidding I don't even own a hat but yeah isn't that cool so that's how cloisonne is made and uh that applies just as much to this little piece of cloisonne where you can see his wires and he's got sort of a dull finish and you would think he was pretty old um, likely middleware kind of the middle of the Meiji era Japan you can see the wires as we as we turn it and stuff and then this very odd piece of cloisonne that I just got yesterday and you can see there's wires in the background there and you can feel them it's almost as if it never went through its final sanding and polishing because these all which I mean like I think that would be an intentional choice these all have um these all have raised surfaces it's almost like Moriyagi And then this little fella, who's amazingly detailed. One of my most prized vases. Just because I love the little irises and stuff. But you see all this is still done in that same technique. Just laying down wire and filling it with enamel. Obviously, this is a very nice piece. But you can see his wires as we turn it and stuff, huh? So yeah, this is Austin. Telling you again how cloisonne is made, but now we have a progression shet set to actually show you. Shet? <laughs> That's not a swear, YouTube. I don't want to hear it. That was just me mixing up two words. <laughs> this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Hopefully always educating you on something new and letting you learn about something crazy I mean this is pretty cool huh so yeah that's like uh I mean imagine how long that little vase would have taken with all those little wires laid out through the flowers and stuff isn't that just crazy I mean uh, it's it's you know you would sit there for hours some of these larger vases took actual years to make like into over five years to make them so I mean this is really a a passion thing this is a time-consuming uh, you know just uh just who would get into it now and get paid nothing for it you know it's yeah i don't know i don't know it, this is never going to exist again in the capacity that it has in the past this is cloisonne this is austin at the best i can afford antiques channel hopefully uh just getting better every day showing you something new and wild every day i love you guys <laughs>